Well, good morning. Good to see you all out this morning. It's such a beautiful day. You know, it's those mornings that I like that it's kind of cool in the morning and it starts to warm up. So uh, you get the best of both. So it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. Praise God. Uh, as usual, it's a time you can turn off your phones, turn your attention to what God has, and uh, Ed is going to be playing and bringing us into the presence of God. So prepare yourselves for worship. Amen. Those of us that have not been brought up in technology, praise God. 
Okay, and then if you'd like to give to person to person, um, people are, are still hungry um, and people still need help. And the prices have not gone down. <laughs> if anything, they're still going to climb them. And uh, it's amazing sometimes, you know, when I haven't been to the grocery store in a while and I go and I'm like, what? That costs how much? You know, and you can imagine some of the people that are living hand to mouth and that can barely make it. So let's do our part. And even if you can only bring in a can of beans, so what? God is blessed. Remember the boy with the loaves and the fishes and how God made that increase. I mean, that is amazing. We were watching the Chosen, I don't know if any of you have seen that, but we saw the episode that illustrated about the loaves and the fishes, and it was just incredible, just incredible. I mean, I can't imagine how God did that, but he did, so praise the Lord. Okay, Monday is prayer meeting. Um, we'll, yeah, I don't know what we're doing, because my daughter's hanging in the balances here. We're not sure exactly when she's going to go, so... Um, uh, I think it's all that she's dying. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> she's not dying, no, no. She's just uh, 39 weeks and four days pregnant <laughs> with her number four. So, you know, that can happen pretty quickly. Praise the Lord. Um, so, I'm, for now, it'll be four o'clock on the phones um, if you want to be a part of it. Um, go ahead and give Pastor a call, 203 984 0367 and uh, we pray about anything and everything and for everyone and uh, we laugh and we cry and we get in there and just pray with each other and it's a wonderful wonderful time um, I have my my kids now you know that live in different areas of the country oh mom could you have your prayer group pray about this oh mom could you pray about this oh dad you know, they're always calling us to pray about these things because they know God answers prayer. And, um, you know, I'm living testimony of that, and they are too. So we thank God for that. Praise God. Uh, Bible study with our own Micah Cardamon is leading our Bible study downstairs. Um, they, apparently there were 18 people there um, Tuesday night. So come out and join in and enjoy yourselves. And... Uh, learn a little bit more about the Word of God. You know, the Word of God is the, the thing that we need the most. We need prayer, and we need the Word. And uh, God wants to bless us, He wants to guide us, and give us wisdom, and help us through this life. And, you know, um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world that is, I call, call it inside out, upside down. You know, not at all what God wants. And, you know, I hear people saying, Oh, I worry so much about my grandchildren and about this next generation. Well, yes, it is good to be have a, a healthy concern. But I firmly believe that God has gifted this generation and the one to come for such a time as this with what they need. They may I may not have what they what they have in order to live that Christian life and be a testimony in the world. But God is equipping them, and I truly believe that He is. Right, Micah? Praise God. And uh, we want to, I'm diverting, diverting here a little bit, we want to keep Micah in prayer. He's just started some um, studies with Liberty University online. So um, we're encouraging him and supporting him and keeping you in prayer. Praise God. Let's see what else. Oh, and then we just invite you back here for worship at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Bring someone with you. Let them know that we are on Facebook Live and on YouTube also. Thanks, God. And I think that's it. I bless you all. Just remember, though, if you have any prayer requests, you don't have to be on the phone with us praying. You can just text us very casually. Just send us a text, and we'll bring it before the Lord. So no problem. And, and don't ever think that, oh, God's got bigger things to worry about. Because you know what? He said that his eye is on the sparrow. And he watches over you too. Okay? God bless you all.
Let's open up our hymn books. Number 59. 59. interesting thing about it is what I said was that uh, I started singing hymns when I was just a little kid and there were old people in the church. Now I'm the old people in the church and still singing the hymns and they still mean to me as much as they ever have. Uh, the hymns of the church are uh, just tremendous and have so much power to them. So I pray that you enjoy them. The word of God is uh, brought forth in a, a real special way. Rick, uh, we're going to do our church covenant. I don't know if you want to use that mic or another mic. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, turn it on. Okay. Let's just turn it on.
think he even realized it was that goal. Didn't we? If you would please stand. We'll read the first and the last paragraphs together, and the middle one is responsible. Having been led, led by, by the, Spirit the Spirit of God, of God profess our faith in, in Jesus Christ, and having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do now solemnly and joyfully affirm our covenant with God and with each other. We pledge to serve Christ in the fellowship of this congregation. We shall endeavor to love one another, to remember one another in prayer, to share in each other's joys, and to sustain each other in times of distress. We aspire to be a fellowship of the concerned, where the lost may find Jesus Christ, sinners may find pardon, seekers may find meaning for their lives, and where all who come may find welcome. We shall strive to be responsible church members through faithful attendance, study, and giving. We shall seek to be obedient to Christ in our daily living, using the Holy Bible as our guide. Within our homes, in our labor, and while at leisure, we shall strive for attitudes and actions which will reflect God's Spirit working through us. We further resolve to accept our responsibilities as Christian citizens. Believing that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, we shall endeavor to avoid experiences and habits that defile the body and hinder our witness. Believing that our call to membership in the church is a call to witness to the world, we dedicate ourselves anew as servants of the Lord of all life. As we pledge our support to the work of our missionaries throughout the world, we commit ourselves to the mission through which God calls us. Acknowledging our human frailties and ever seeking forgiveness and uplifting, we profess our need of the Holy Spirit and commit our lives to Jesus Christ and through Him to the care, the judgment, and deliverance and the mercy of Almighty God. Amen. I become so excited about our covenant that I agree with that part as well. I hope I didn't confuse anyone. Amen. <laughs> uh, I didn't mention uh, we are going to have a baptism at the end of service next week. So if there's anybody who is interested in being baptized, uh, see me and uh, we can uh, make that happen. So praise God. Just get a hold of them. Amen. Testimony time. Now my wife already started giving a testimony of down at the beach, but uh, anybody who wants to give testimony, see if he's there for us. Uh, yes, well, it's nice to see everyone. And um, I did just want to kind of add, like you were saying, uh, Wednesday night was definitely uh, just an encouraging night, I'd say, you know, an exciting night to see, um, you know, some of the churches working together rather than just kind of if it was one church, you know, doing their thing, it was nice to see the uh, group effort and some of the different solos to the choir and uh, the groups. So uh, it was encouraging and it was, it was a good time. It was an exciting time to be out and try to be a uh, blessing, try to, you know, share some of that hope, uh, the joy that we can have with people around us and, and not just, um, you know, keep it to ourselves. So, yeah, if there's anybody, anything, with any, uh, anything anybody would like to share this morning, any uh, prayer requests, answers to prayer, concerns, um, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, yes? I just like to thank God for the allowing us to find ourselves in the
right? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, I also need 
prayers in particular for Christine, and especially for taking care of her parents. Uh, she's really got her hands full. And uh, if I was there, it would just be another hand to take care of this so, mm-hmm. Eventually, uh, hopefully, everything works out. But I, uh, I did want everyone to know, so all of a sudden you don't start seeing me not here and wondering if something happened. So that is uh, it. And I guess uh, I'll be one of the ones getting baptized next Sunday. Amen. Thank you, Jim. Oh, yeah, any other? uh... This is my prayer for my daughter. Mm-hmm. Amen. Uh, yes. Uh, just uh, take prayers out there for the people on here and your friends. I want to wish the network and all the people who are proud of us and those that will go into the body and is recovered. Thank you for. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's um, let's go. Let's begin with the word of prayer this morning. Uh, Father God, I want to thank you for this time that you've given us, uh, the ability to be here, uh, to spend time uh, worshiping you, to get to know you better, to uh, grow in our love for you. Do uh, just thank you for another day. Thank you for uh, the life that you have given us, the family, the friends, and relationships that we are fortunate to have. And that they would continue to uh, strengthen us, that we would strengthen each other. And we just want to lift up these different uh, requests this morning, Lord. Uh, those who are asking for just praying for family members, uh, Lord, that you watch over them, uh, continue to provide for them uh, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Uh, we just pray for uh, those who are going to be traveling. Uh, as Jay was saying, that uh, he's going to be leaving uh, for 
In Utah, we just pray for safe travels and for continued guidance and just that you would uh, be with them, uh, you know what their needs are. So we just ask that you continue to uh, just touch their lives and guide their steps, give them wisdom as they make these different decisions. And we just pray for strength for their families, uh, for the strength for them to do uh, what they are doing, taking care of others, and just uh, supporting one another. So we just pray you watch over them and continue to guide their steps as well as for um, playing that she was saying or all the friends who were both seriously injured, we just pray for uh, healthy recovery for them. I pray you give the doctors uh, just wisdom as they work to uh, treat their, their needs from those injuries. And we just pray for comfort for them and their, and their families this morning. Um, uh, for the pastor, his family, and their daughter, who's getting ready to give birth, we pray just watch over her and just bless her and her family husband and the children and give them peace of mind and just watch over them as they uh, prepare for that in, in the near future. Uh, thank you for, you know, the uh, Donna and her family and her son Jamie, we just ask for uh, protection and guidance as well for just the situation there and that you would continue to work that out uh, for your good. Uh, for Anderson, his wife's her former classmate, we just pray that you would comfort uh, encourage her as she goes through this time of mourning uh, since her husband passed away. We just ask that you would uh, be with them today and each day uh, just to uh, re remind them of your presence, you know, to fill them with your peace at this difficult time and to let them know uh, just that you are watching over them, uh, that you do care for them. So we just pray for your peace. Uh, to be with them in your presence just to remind her and her family um, of your love and your care for each one. Uh, we thank you for the gift of music uh, for Edna and, and her family and friends and just everybody here, Lord, the different requests that have been made each week. We just want to continue to uh, bring them to you to share the concerns of our heart. Uh, we thank you for the answers to prayer that we have seen uh, heard. We thank you for uh, just being uh, patient with us, being gracious for second chances. And I just thank you for the, the families who are here today, uh, people who chose to be here. I would just pray that you would bless this time and service, uh, that your Holy Spirit would continue to uh, speak to us, to open our eyes, and to soften our hearts, to understand the truth of your word, and that we would know you better. Uh, to trust you more and to continue to grow in our love for you and our love for others. So I pray that you would just guide us this week, uh, continue to show us what it is that you want us to do, whether it's at work, our school, or being home. Uh, we just pray that we would find ways to be a blessing for you to uh, imitate Christ and to reflect your, your goodness, your light, and your nature. And I just pray that you would bless Pastor Saunders and all the pastors this morning and across our country and throughout the world, that you would uh, strengthen the body of Christ and that we would support one another, pray for each other, and continue to remain th faithful uh, no matter what happens in life. And so I just ask you to bless the service, uh, prepare our hearts, and open our minds uh, to what you want to speak to us this morning. And I pray you cleanse us from any sinful, Distracting unrighteous things, and we want to let the parties request you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. If you open up your Bibles to John chapter 14, John chapter 14. Now, like a, a good teacher, I'm going to give you homework. Your homework is going to be go through what I don't get a chance to go through. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some things in chapter 14 and uh, kind of emphasizing and going through one particular verse. But uh, we'll kind of be covering a lot of subjects 
Uh, let's just take a moment for prayer as you're looking that up. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you that your word will illuminate, your word will go forth, your word will not return void. We thank you that even just a, a portion of scripture, Lord God, if we can take it into our heart, Lord God, that we can be blessed and guided and directed. So Lord God, just speak to us. I pray for your anointing, that I would bring forth uh, your word correctly, and that uh, those who are in the hearing portion of this would be anointed also to receive from you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you take a look at this portion of Scripture, it's really interesting to me that starting with uh, chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, it's all talking about one particular night. I don't know about you, but so many times when we look at Scripture, you don't have that many chapters that are only talking about one particular time. And this was right, uh, yeah, take a look, we have a have, uh, Can you see if she, they're looking for Bibles. We have some in the pew. Okay, I'll say. Um, that it speaks so much uh, about that particular night. And it's the night that the Lord was going to be betrayed. It was the Passover meal that he had with his disciples. It's all this. But now let's let's kind of take all of that and, and zoom in on chapter 14. Verse 1. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you to myself. And where I am, you may be also. And you know the way uh, where I am going. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, nor the way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but through me. May God add a blessing to the reading of this part of the scripture. We take a look at it in the world today. Do you have anything that your heart would be troubled about? You, you got anything that is, is uh, problems? I think we all do, right? If you really, you know, take a look around, there's all kinds of things that upset us. The world today is always seemingly in turmoil. There's always something that is upsetting somebody. And maybe it's just the way that the, the news does it. I think it would be really cool. I don't, I don't think they'd ever do it, but can you imagine having a news station that only has good news? And today, the fire department went and it rescued a cat that was stuck up in a tree. Today, you know, somebody was rescued from this or that. Today, you know, they had a, you know, whatever, positive things that they can go through. There are so many positive things happening, but yet we do what? We are troubled at every turn. We are upset about everything and, and, and just worried about everything, you know? And the world today is in turmoil. The Lord, the world today has too many people's opinions all out there at the same time. It is also looking at political correctness. You can't say certain things. You don't want to aggravate certain people. And, and, and they say, you know, if we are Christians, and it says here that Jesus says, you know, a bold statement like he just said. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but through me. Well, kind of, that leaves a lot of people out. You don't want to offend anybody. Sorry. That's the way it is. 
We need to look at the fact that Jesus is saying that he has, he holds the truth. You know, I, I don't know if they even do it in the, in the courts. So you, you're, you're around courts and things like, do they say, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God? Do they say that? They do, so yeah. Do they say, so help me God? Yeah, they do say that? Yeah, all right. You know, swearing to tell the truth, the whole truth. You see, we need to look at this, that Jesus is the truth. The way we look at the world today, people are almost offended by the fact. In fact, it says that over 66% of the Americans uh, believe that there is no absolute truth. There is no absolute truth. It's kind of this way or that way. Well, you can believe what you want to believe. The Bible says, not Pastor Saunders, but the Bible says that Jesus is the truth. It says, I am the truth. And we need to look at this. It is an amazing thing that people want to look around and say, well, we can push it this way or that way, and well, I don't really feel comfortable with it. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You see, here it is, we're talking about what? When he says, in my father's house there are many mansions or dwelling places or rooms, however you want to put it. And the, he's preparing that for us. We're talking about heaven. Do you know how to get there? Oh, I don't know. I'll Google it, right? Uh, I'll put it into the GPS. I want to go to heaven. Okay? Well, there's only one way to go to heaven, and that's with Jesus. Jesus is the only answer. He is the only one. There is an absolute truth. There is an absolute direction and way. And people say, oh, yeah, but can't you, you know? Well, you know, it's, it's funny, and, and, and maybe you won't understand, but up in Maine, there's a, there was a couple of comedians. <laughs> it's called, what, Bert and I, right? And uh, he would say, uh, hey, do you know how to get to the Charles place? And he goes, oh, sure. He says, you go down here, and you take a right, and then you take a left, and then you, no, 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 no. You take a left, and then a right, and then you go down and around, no, 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 no. He says, you, you know, you can't get there from here. You know, well, let me tell you that you can get to heaven from here. And the answer is, to get to heaven, you need to know Jesus Christ, because he is the way. You see, today, less than 20% of the world believes in the Christian God. Now I was kind of awestruck that it said less than 20%. With all of the different faiths and religions and things like that, you know, it's less than 20% of the world's population believe in the Christian God. And even with that less than 20% that believe in the Christian God of Jesus Christ, you know, that really believe what it is, it's less than that. And I'm sitting there going, wow. That's such a small little thing with the billions of people that are in the world today that only a small fraction really believe and know the way to get to heaven. How do you get there? You got to trust Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You see, it goes on and it talks about these facts that we need to deal with. You know, uh, there was a, a, a movie, A Few Good Men, and in the questioning he says, I want the truth. He says, you can't handle the truth. Well, the problem with the world today is we can't really handle the truth that Jesus is the answer. That the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Oh, pastor, that, that's a little harsh, isn't it, when you say all have sinned? No, that's what the Bible says. It's not what my opinion is. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Well, that's kind of harsh, isn't it? Hey, it's not me. It's what the Bible says. That the wages of sin is death. <laughs> but then there's the word but. But the gift of the God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wonderful thing about it is 
the grace of God that Jesus paid it all, that he went and prepared a place that while we were yet sinners, the Bible says, he died for us. He paid the price for us. He gave us a way to get to heaven. Here it is, the truth. Some people can't handle the truth that that's the only way to get there. The world looks at these things, and I want you to look at this particular scripture again, that he says in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. And in verse 7, I want you to move along with me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said, whoa, 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 stop. Show us the Father and it will be enough. Jesus says that after that. He says, have I been long, this long with you and you don't know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You see, we need to know that Jesus has given us this answer, this problem that we have of seeing and knowing who God is. Jesus showed us through his sacrificial death, his love, his mercy, and his grace. He has shown us time and time and time and time again the message that he's been trying to tell us. He goes on in verse 17, he says that he'll send the spirit of truth when the world cannot receive because it does not know him or know about him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. You see, the spirit of truth is something that God gives, the Holy Spirit gives, and the understanding and the peace of God that passes all understanding will abide with us when we are able to open up ourselves. Okay? And so many of us at times uh, get kind of stiff-necked, you know? I'll, I'll, I'll do it my way. I think Frank Sinatra sang that famous song, I did it my way. That's a sad song. This fact that you didn't do it God's way. You see, we are all called to do it His way. We are all called to be able to take, and it's because we trust in His grace. There is only one thing. God's pattern is three parts. One is redemption. The next thing is after we're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, after we have confessed our faults, and that He forgave us, that he shed his blood. And as we go to communion today, we're talking about that shed blood, his broken body and his shed blood. We're talking about that portion that we might be redeemed by the blood of the lamb. He brings us to righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But because of who he is, we're redeemed and we're washed and we've made whole. Why? so that we might worship Him. We need to worship the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. It goes back to what Jesus said when He was challenged. Well, you know, the lawyer says, what is the most important of all of the laws? They had over 600 laws. Which one was the most important? <laughs> Jesus says, oh, that's easy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these things, all of the laws are written. You see, this is where we need to go back to. Do we love God with everything? Do we admit that we have faults and problems and struggles? Let not your heart be troubled. I said I'll come back to that. Keep reflecting back to that. You believe in God, believe also in me. You see, it is the plan of salvation that we need to say, what's going to get us through the tough times? You got tough times? Let not your heart be troubled. Oh, I'm so troubled. But hey, we need to trust him. We need to obey him. We need to look to him. Because this is the, the simple truth that he has for us. 
I don't know about you, but the world that we look at today is, you know, I don't, you know, Facebook and all these other things. Somebody dies, and the first thing they say is they are, oh, rest in peace. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Well, you know, I'm sorry. Unless they knew Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, unless they knew the Prince of Peace, they can't have peace. You can't rest in peace. A little bit further on, as we take a look in John 14, we see that the place in verse 27, it says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Stop right there. It's, it's something, not like the world wants to give it to you. Well, if you go to the doctor, they'll prescribe something that will make you feel relaxed and feel good about yourself. And it says, peace I leave with you. My peace, the peace of God, the peace that is in Jesus Christ, the peace that Jesus had as he went through all the things that he went through. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Again, he says, let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. You see, verse 1 and verse 27 have that thing in common that it says, do not be troubled. Do not be afraid. Because the peace that I give you is sufficient. Now think about it. I don't know about you. It's going to go on and it's going to be t teaching us a lot of these other things. And we know that this is all before he was going to be going to be crucified. And it's going to be before he even goes to the garden. It's going to be all these things. But when he had the relationship with God, he had peace through it all. Now I don't know about you, but if you've ever held a nail and used a hammer to try to drive that in, and sometimes you swing a little too hard and you hit the wrong nail. Hello? Has anybody ever hit your thumb when you're doing that? If you knew ahead of time that you were going to smash your thumb, you might not have even have wanted to drive in the nail. But Jesus, knowing all things, knew that he was going to be crucified, knew that he was going to be nailed to the cross, knew that he was going to be dead and buried, then the third day arise from the dead. He knew that he was going to go through that for us. Wow, I don't know about you. But you see, when he was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You know, that was you and me. That he was saying, forgive them, forgive me. He paid the price on the cross and his peace was upon me because my peace he left with me. His peace is abiding with me, not like the world given. He says, let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. You see, this is the only way that we can come into a relationship with Jesus Christ and be able to worship. This is the only way that we can come to the full knowledge of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but there's a, a man named... Uh, uh, Rebbe Zacharias, who said this, he says, humans uh, are being, considering uh, that no one can send them to heaven or hell. The fact is that God himself does not send people to heaven or hell. So people can't send you to heaven or hell. God doesn't send you to heaven or hell, but people make a choice to either receive, receive or reject the grace of God. It's not what I say. It's not what somebody else says. It's not even what, what, what God is going to do. Because he's already put it in place. He says, here, here's the choice. You receive what Jesus has for you. The grace of God, the plan of God. Receive that and you have, will have your sins forgiven. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says this, Salvation is found in no one else other than that name, which is above every name, that they must be saved. We're talking about the name of Jesus. In verse Timothy, For there is one God, one mediator, between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. 1 John 5, 12. He has the Son of 
has, he who has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son does not have life. Life is in Jesus Christ. We need to know that it's Him and Him alone. We need to know that the claims that God has for us are amen. They are done. Just done. A num number of years ago, I was coaching with football, and somebody said something that I uh, really thought was true and, and factual. And I said, amen. And it wasn't really a church situation. <laughs> it was right before a game, and he had just said something that was very true. And I said, well, when I say amen, it means I accept that fact, and I heartily rejoice in that. It is an agreement upon. Do we agree what God said? Are we ready to say amen to God? Amen. I should hear it. We need to know that there is a hearty agreement with the plan of salvation that he has for us. And Jesus, knowing all things, and even in advance, he still went through with it. Again, what I said was, we see many verses in many chapters before this chapter 14. And to kind of set it up, they were talking in, you know, chapter 13, you know, uh, they're having this, this time of the feast of the Passover and Jesus washes the feet of, of his disciples and all these things and predicts that he's going to be betrayed and all these other things. And, and then Peter comes up with the thing. He says, Lord, come here. Don't start talking like that, that you're going to be betrayed and all these other things. You know, don't you think that, you know, you've overcome all these other things and you've done this. And he's, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> he says, what are you talking about that where you're going that I can't go? He says, I'll follow you to the death. And Jesus is sitting there shaking his head. No, not tonight. He says, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. You see, we need to know that even with our mindset the way it is, there are times when we fall back. And what is it that saves us through all those things? It's the grace of God. We sing a, a song here at this church during communion. We sing it at baptisms. We sing it at funerals. We sing it all the time. Because it's amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. You see, this grace, this amazing grace, is all-encompassing. This is the story. This is the fact. And it says, it goes back to this thing. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He's going to prepare heaven for us. We got our reservations in. Hello? You got your reservations in? You know? You got your reservations in. It's going to be wonderful. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If somebody sells you a ticket in any other way to get to heaven, it's a lie. All the other religions of the world now, this is something that I just read, and so I'm going to share it with you. All the religions of the world, it says, follow me, and I will show you a way to truth, if you do. Da, 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 da. Jesus said, no, I am not going to show you the way to truth. I am the way, the truth, and the light. And the way that we spell it is not do, like the rest of the religions of the world. The way we spell it is done. It is finished. Jesus went all the way to the cross for you and for me. He said all these things about Father, forgive them. He said all these things, but the last thing he said, he says it's finished. He was on the cross and he said it is finished. Unto thy hand I commit my spirit. And in those words, what it means, it is a, you know, if you're a person who has been an accountant, 
It means the debts are all, all cleared up. It's done. It's finished. No more debt. The price has been paid. On that cross right then, he said, it's finished. Your debt has been paid in full. Nothing that I did, but what he did. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Can we close in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, help us to believe and to know without a doubt in our hearts, as you have said that, that you are the only way. And we are not being offensive to other people. We are taking the truth that you have given to us, that you loved us so much, that you paid for our sin upon the cross, that you washed those sins away, that you made us every bit whole, that even though our righteousness is as filthy rags, we are washed in the blood of the Lamb, and we are able to move forward to be righteousness in your sight, that we're able to worship because of who you are and what you have done. So this morning, Lord God, as we prepare ourselves to take communion, to remember the sacrifice that you made, help us right now to examine ourselves, to look and to see that we cannot make it on our own, that we need to follow you, for you are the way. We want to go to heaven and be with you, Lord. We want to worship you. We want to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So let us accept the fact that we are sinners saved by grace. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Open up your hymn books to 299. symbol of your broken body as you were broken and took the stripes upon your back as you went all the way to the cross for us. We thank you that your body was broken for us and we do this in the remembrance of you. Receive the bread. Sing the second verse. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. 
This is my blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. All of you drink of this cup. So, Lord, as we take of this cup, we do this in remembrance of you until you come again. Lord God, we thank you that no other blood could heal our broken body. No other blood could, could shed away or wash away our sin. Only the blood of the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So, Lord, we remember your sacrifice. Receive the cup. Stand together and take someone by the hand. Give us ears to hear what you have to say to us, that we might continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, amen. and amen. amen. 